Okay, and we're back. Uh, I'm just going through section 3.2 now from the study guide. Uh, last time we talked about some problems on quadratics. This time, arbitrary polynomials. <laughs> so here we go. There should be an asterisk on this, pro on this movie, I think. Here we go. <laughs> Sketch the graph of p of x equals x times x minus 3 times x plus 2. Okay, there's an awful lot that we learned in this section about what the graph of a polynomial looks like. When I look at this, x times x minus 3 times x plus 2, I ask myself first, what is the leading term? What's the highest degree term? In this case, it's x cubed. So this polynomial has a positive leading coefficient of 1. It has an odd degree of 3. Those two things tell me that the graph has some shape that looks like this. It might or might not have a wiggle in the middle. It definitely has end behavior like this. As x goes to infinity, y goes to infinity. As x goes to negative infinity, y goes to negative infinity as well. It definitely has this overall shape. The only question is, what about the wiggle? So to find out the information about the wiggle, <laughs> what do we do? We look at each factor. We look at the multiplicity of that factor. So, what is the multiplicity of x? There's nothing written in its power, so it's a 1. That's an odd multiplicity. What about x minus 3? Same. And x plus 2? The same. All of these have odd multiplicity. So, if I drew the x-axis here, and then plotted these zeros, x equal to 0, x equal to negative 2, x equal to 3. I've plotted three points corresponding to the zeros of these factors. If I do that, Based on those odd multiplicities, I know exactly what the graph does locally. What it does really close to these zeros. The graph goes through the axis. It does not bounce off the axis like a multiplicity that is even would do. So here's our general picture, which means our graph comes up like this, and it keeps going up like this over here. And when it comes up, it hits this 0. And because of this odd multiplicity here, it keeps going through the axis. Okay. Then it's going to come back down eventually. It's going to go up high and come back down. And when it gets to this point, because this is an odd, oops, I was pointing at the wrong multiplicity earlier. Because of this odd multiplicity at this 0, forgive me, it goes through. Because of this odd multiplicity, this 0 <laughs> has the behavior uh, where our graph goes right through that 0, which is 0. And then lastly, our, our graph you know, comes down a bit and then goes back up to this 0. And because of this odd multiplicity, our graph continues through and reconnects up here. Is this a perfectly acceptable graph for the test? Yes. If I wanted more accuracy, I would give more than this. I would say, sketch the graph of this and plot six more points which are not zeros. So I would, I would say six more. So pick a couple 
other points, plug them in, figure out the exact height, plot it carefully. But if I just say sketch a graph, this is completely sufficient. Okay. If you have this overall shape, half the battle is, is won. All right. From there, it's just stretching this curve and making it look a little better, a little more accurate. So that's it for, for question three. Question four. Sketch the graph of q of x equal to x cubed plus x times x plus 2 times x minus 3 squared. So I ask myself the same set of questions. What is the leading term? What does it look like? I see an x cubed times an x times an x squared. So what is that? x to the uh -huh. 6. OK, good. I know you said it out loud. So here we go. x to the 6th. So what does that mean our graph looks like? has a positive leading coefficient of plus 1. It's an even power, which means our graph overall has this kind of shape. Some unknown number of wiggles in there. <laughs> I'll settle down eventually. Uh, some unknown number of wiggles in there, but it goes up and to the right, up and to the left. That's the end behavior of this. If there was a negative here, this thing would be flipped over. Okay, but this is the general shape. It just looks more or less like this. Okay. Alrighty. Um, so let's get into it now. What do the wiggles look like? What are the local behaviors near the zeros for this function? Well, x cubed. That means that there's a 0 at x equals 0. And it's a cubed, which means our graph goes through that point like this. Or it comes down and through like this. So there's two possibilities there. Okay, So again, it's, it's either down through like that or like that. At negative 2, we've got an odd multiplicity again, which means our graph goes through the point negative 2. Okay, And <laughs> I think one of my daughters is singing, although I'm not sure. Um, at 3, we have an even multiplicity of 2. So our graph either bounces off like that or bounces off like this. Okay, And we know which one it is. Okay, in fact, at negative 2, remember, our, our graph goes through like this or like this. We can safely say which one is which at both of these zeros now. Look at the total shape, the overall shape of our graph. It has to end up going up and to the left over here, which means over here, our graph looks like this. And then it comes down below the x-axis because of the odd multiplicity, x plus 2 to the power of 1. Our graph comes back up and goes through this 0 because of the odd multiplicity of this factor x cubed. And then it comes up and comes down, and it bounces. It does not go through the x-axis. It bounces right off and rises back up. So there you have it. graph looks something like this. Is this a perfectly acceptable graph for the test? Oh yeah. There it is. If I wanted a better graph, I'd say plot a few more points to make it more accurate. But as a sketch, there you have it. Next question. What is the end behavior of this thing? OK. And I give you some blanks to fill in. So I'll, I'll just write these out. Uh, okay, so end behavior. In the two previous problems you've seen in this movie, what did I do to determine end behavior? Is the first question that I asked. First question was, what is the leading term? What is the term with the highest degree? If I move my camera, you'll be convinced even more. 
we go. You'll be convinced even more that there's nothing else behind that. It's just a six. So what is the end behavior? Well, we look at this leading term, which has the highest degree. It's x to the fifth with a negative sign. This is the only thing that determines end behavior. Everything else determines how many of those waves there are in between. Okay, So this is odd, which means what's the general shape? Well, it's either like this or it's like this. That's a negative sign in front, which means it's the one on the right. It looks something like this. Some wiggles here in the middle. So this is all you need to help you determine end behavior. So as x goes to infinity, what does the height of our graph do? Oh, it goes down further and further, doesn't it? So it goes to negative infinity. And you can think about this just by plugging in bigger and bigger positive numbers. A positive number to the fifth power is still positive. And then you negate it. So if you, if you plug in bigger and bigger numbers, that's what this means, then your output becomes more and more negative. That's what that means. That's what I'm writing here literally in symbols, okay? What's the other end behavior? Well, as x goes to negative infinity, which means if I plug in more and more negative numbers, like negative a billion, negative a trillion, negative a Google, if I plug in bigger and bigger negative numbers, what happens to my height? Well, this, this graph is suggesting that it goes to positive infinity which is definitely the case. You think about the equation for the leading term, the expression rather. You plug in a negative number to an odd power, you still have a negative output. Then you negate it, which gets rid of the negative sign. So you get a big positive number. So there you have it. This is the end behavior. You can make these complete sentences by saying as x goes to infinity, y goes to negative infinity, period. As x goes to negative infinity, y goes to positive infinity, period. Complete sentences, right? But uh, And that's all I, I gave you here. Okay, well that's it for section 3.2. We talked about polynomials, graphing, you know, sort of any polynomial in general, and then looking at end behavior of functions. Um, but that's it. I'll be back in another recording for section 3.3 problems. I hope this helps.